Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another edition of Five Things That We Learned. First things first, guys, make sure you smash a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here, and as always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, people. Obviously, as we know, last night, Chelsea beat Blackburn 2-0 to book a quarter-final date in the Carabao Cup against Newcastle at Stamford Bridge. So let's dive into the show. Five things that we learned then, people. All the key talking points from the previous game. And I wanted to kick this one off with the importance of the Carabao Cup for Chelsea this season. It represents the best chance of us winning silverware. We're perfectly honest. We're not winning the Premier League. We're not in Europe. And the FA Cup is obviously going to be a tough ask. This represents our best chance. And, you know, we should be taking it seriously. And I'm glad that we are. Pochettino's taking it seriously. The team was strong last night. And ultimately, you know, it's not about what the trophy represents. Yes, of course, it's not as big as an FA Cup or a Champions League or, or whatever, but it's what it signifies in terms of building that winning mentality within the group, you know, showing that this group can win, showing that this manager uh, can win, the confidence boost it will give. Winning breeds confidence. It's an old school saying, but it's exactly what it does. And the first chance you get to win a trophy, you've got to do everything you can to keep it. Look, the draws opened up. Yes, Newcastle's a tough game. But, you know, United are out, Arsenal are out, City are out. Um, you know, yes, Liverpool, Liverpool are still in. But it's very winnable. And, you know, we should be treating it with respect like we are, are doing. So I'm glad that we're doing that, going with strong lineups uh, in, in each and every round so far. And, you know, it's really, really important to, to, to build that winning mentality in this group. So many of this group haven't won very haven't won anything in their careers or very little and it will just show this new squad young hungry players you know that we can win together give them that winning feeling and motivate them and push them on to to win to win more and more and more uh during Chelsea think back to 2005 when Mourinho first came in targeted this league cup a lot of the players that played during that time have subsequently said how important that trophy was for the group in terms of Breathed, breathing that winning mentality and pushing them on to, to win more and more. And it kind of set in motion the 20 years of success uh, that, that we had afterwards. I'm not saying that's gonna, the same is going to happen here, but the principle applies. This cup is the most winnable cup for us. We should be winning it. I've got to be totally honest, the tips at the start of the season, we should be winning it. And, you know, it's a place in Europe up for grabs as well, which given our league form, you just don't know, you know, what's going to happen there. And, you know, it absolutely should be treated with respect and get more credit than it deserves. Anytime you win something, it deserves to be respected. I don't care what it is. You play football to win things. As a fan, you celebrate the trophies you win. So for me, you know, I want to be seeing, I want to be seeing those armpits at the end of the season, uh, in February, you know, get that trophy. Um, we need it. 2017, the last domestic cup we had. So yeah, look, this is important on so many levels. And I'm glad to see that, the, that Pochettino is taking it seriously. And you know what? We're, we're not far away from Wembley. So let's hope we can keep that momentum going. But that is my first point. Absolutely really important, this Carabao Cup. And it's our best chance of winning uh, silverware. My next point I wanted to touch on is the return of Benoit Badiashile. A massive, massive confidence boost. First time we've seen him uh, following a long-term absence, stretching back, I think, to last time we saw him was Bournemouth away at the back end of last season, but a bit of a hamstring injury. And it's great to see him back. You know, he's going to be a really important player for us. He looks so calm on the ball. He's composed. Uh, when, when we first signed him, you know, a couple of games he played. And I'm just like, this guy looks like he's been here for years. You know, it, it's going to be, it's like, it's, his return is a massive boost. He looks comfortable alongside the Sassy. They both played together uh, with each other at Monaco. So they know each other. Good partnership, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, he opened the scoring in, in the half hour mark. Yeah, he played 60 minutes, but a timely return to fitness and obviously capping it off with a goal. I don't expect him to start against Tottenham, but what it does do though is bring the question as to what is Pochettino going to do now with the centre-backs? We've now got four centre-backs who are all fit and on merit all deserve to play. Silva, De Sassi, Colwell and uh, and now Badia Shield. So it's going to be interesting to see what Pochettino does, how he increases Badia Shield's minutes to boost his ma match fitness up. Uh, you know, Who's going to be that first choice partnership? Who's going to end up missing out? Because a centre-back is not a position that you sub on too often unless there's been an injury or you're looking to, to shut up shop in a game with sort of five, ten minutes to go. So it's going to be interesting to see how Poch does it. It's going to be a bit of a headache now because all those centre-backs do deserve to play. So 
a welcome headache, a, a great a great position to be in as a football club, having all those great options to choose from. But yeah, Badia Shile back in the mix, fantastic return to form for him, return to fitness and, and, and all that stuff. But it leaves you a difficult decision here. What are we going to do with our centre-back pairing and what is going to be the centre-back pairing moving forward for the rest of the season? Because you really don't want to be chopping and changing that one uh, too much. My third point, people, obviously goes on another returning injured player, Rhys James, first start, uh, in three months, first start since the opening day of the season. He himself played 60 minutes, came through unscathed, looked all right. It, it wasn't amazing or anything like that, but this is a huge boost uh, for 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 Reese James. Um, you know, he 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 was he had intent. Uh, he could have had a couple of goals in the first half, uh, to be perfectly honest. But you know, he, he he did well. He came through unscathed, which was the main thing. He's going to be a really important player going forward for us. Hopefully, that 60 minutes is enough in the tank for him to to start Monday's game against Tottenham. And despite his in injury issues and how frustrating they have been, he still remains one of our best players, one of our most important and in influential players. So this was a massive boost uh, for Reese James, for Chelsea as well. Hopefully he can stay fit for a prolonged period of time now because he's going to be so, so important uh, to us to us moving forwards. There, there's absolutely no two ways about it. A fit Reese James means a better Chelsea. It's as, it's as simple as that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, my third point, Reese James, massive boost to have him back starting again, building that fitness up. And hopefully he can go into the game against Spurs, his first uh, against them as captain and put in a show. And hopefully, you know, Reece, the Reese James that we all know uh, is going to be back. But again, that's another big boost for Chelsea, Reese James and Badia Shill. So the injured players are starting to come back and it makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, my next point is perhaps not such a positive point. Nico Jackson, I, li I like him. Uh, but his confidence on the floor right now. He needs help. He's really struggling. Um, I almost I almost blame the club for this. You know, he should never have been in this situation in the first place, leading the line for Chelsea. Now, this is a guy that's played 46 games for Villarreal. He's not ready to be the first choice forward. Uh, he should be a rotation option. We didn't sign another forward in the summer. Yes, we know that the, the striker market was poor and whatnot, but when, and obviously Nkunku's injury hasn't helped. I think he would have picks up a chunk of minutes at number nine and it's clear that Jackson is is some uh, is a link-up striker for sure plays better with, with someone you know like an Nkunku uh for example I like Jackson's attributes I think he's got good attributes he runs the channels well he holds the ball up well he links play well um and, and, and all these things but where you want him in the box a he doesn't spend enough time in the box and b right now he's pretty useless in the box he needs an arm around the shoulder he needs you know he needs his confidence boosting he needs that support from Pochettino. He needs that support, you know, from his teammates, from the club, etc. Which I'm sure, which I'm sure he's getting. But he's going through a difficult period right now. I like the attributes that he's got, but you know, he's not ready to lead the lead the line for the club right now. And it's unfair that we are putting him in this position. I think his form will improve when Nkunku returns for sure. I think you know he 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 will be better playing off someone or playing with someone. Absolutely. But right now, his confidence is on the floor. We've got to find a way to pick him up and get him amongst the goals on, on a more regular basis because. We've got to stick with him until until January, leading the line uh, at, at, at the earliest. So, yeah, that that's kind of my fourth point. It's just Nicholas Jackson, we're struggling a little bit. You know, he is struggling. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say he's not good enough for Chelsea because it's, it's far too early to say. But right now, it's clear that he's not good enough to lead the line for us on a regular basis. And he needs help desperately. But I, I believe in the player. Pochettino believes in the player. And I think he will come good and be a good player for us. He's got good attributes. So... Yeah, but he just needs a bit of a helping hand right now because he, he isn't it at the moment. And, and 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 it is as simple as that. He needs more help. Uh, moving on to my fifth and final point, Raheem Sterling. Uh, gets a goal last night, a good finish, a finish you'd expect a player of his quality to make. But if I'm being totally honest, he's just far too inconsistent. You know, he really is far too inconsistent. I, I, I don't know what, what's going on with him. You know, that first half, he was absolutely dire. He doesn't stay out wide. He comes inside too much. He occupies a lot of the space that Jackson wants to occupy. And then Jackson ends up drifting wide and occupying to try and find space. And then when he gets the ball, Jackson's not in the box where, where, where you want him, where you need your centre forward to be. But look, Sterling, for me, not consistent enough. Doesn't do it on a consistent enough basis. This is a guy that came here because he wanted to be the main man. He's on, he's on the big money. He's the highest paid player at the club. And yet he's just putting in inconsistent performance after inconsistent performance, not affecting games on a regular basis. It's all very well turning up against the likes of Luton, Burnley and Blackburn. But bro, you were signed to play and make an impact in the big games against your Tottenham's, against your Arsenal's, etc. 
And, and you're not doing that. So Monday night's a massive game for him. Honestly, when Mudrick's fit again, there's no reason why Sterling should be starting ahead of Mudrick. He simply shouldn't be. He doesn't put in the same defensive work. And for me, it's not as effective. You know, Mudrick, for me right now, should be starting ahead of Sterling. Uh, it, it's as simple as that. We need more from Sterling on a consistent basis. Uh, it really is as simple as that. I'm not convinced on him. I'm not sold on him still. He, he can he can make an impact, sure, but he's not he's not he's not it to be playing week in week out for Chelsea in this attack because he doesn't offer anywhere near enough. So he absolutely has to step up in these games and particularly start influencing big games before I can start to begin to change my opinion on him. But yeah, people, that is just my thoughts uh, on the five things we learned from Chelsea to Blackburn nil. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Smash a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. I'll catch you again in another video soon. Up the Chelsea and peace out.